Never before in all history has the British Empire been so well prepared to defend its interests as it is in this tragic autumn of 1939. The world knows that Britain has not sought war. We believe faithfully that posterity will acquit this generation of these islands of any desire for war. Yet because the threat of conflict has been held against us so long, we have spent many months building up our great resources with tremendous organization. In the simple, moving words of the Prime Minister, we are ready. Following upon his visits to the War Office and the Air Ministry, the King called at the Admiralty, where he was greeted by the First Lord, Lord Stanhope. Meanwhile, events moved swiftly forward. As is the custom, the staff of the German Embassy burnt confidential papers, while the moving of luggage indicated the possibility of departure. Herr Kort, the German Charge d'Affaires, called at number 10 Downing Street. Soon the posters in the streets began to tell their story of yet another war. Soon the newspapers told us that another section of our civilization had gone back to the laws of the jungle. The Polish ambassador called upon our prime minister. Britain intended to fulfill her pledge. For them, the war had already started. With a potential army estimated at six millions, with a great military tradition, Poland was defending her freedom. Meanwhile, evacuation of children from the danger zones of England and Scotland carried on. Great credit reflects upon teachers and all those who have helped in this great work. So many cities today are childless. The children have taken laughter with them. But though there must be heartbreak at each parting, it is immeasurably better that they should have a greater chance of safety. Among the callers at number 10 Downing Street, we saw Mr. Winston Churchill. The same day, the King called upon Mr. Chamberlain, and the crowds gave His Majesty a tremendous greeting. At Buckingham Palace, a sign of the times. Guards on duty have changed over from scarlet and bearskin to the khaki, steel helmet and gas mask of service days. So we complete our story of these days of destiny by returning to the children. Somewhere in the country, the little ones have arrived safely. As usual, the motto is keep smiling. A dreadful necessity has demanded this separation of loved ones. But remember that in their new homes, they will find kindness and sympathy, comfort and understanding, and safety. So let us laugh if we can. Good morning. You kindly uh, consented to take two children. Yes, take two, two, children. two little girls. Yes. Well, here they are. They'll be very happy with you, I'm sure. Thank you very much. Two nice little girls, aren't they? Can this be Mr. Chamberlain? Come. Oh, lovely. Then we're going to have a time, aren't we? Eh? Come on. In your new home. What uh, we'll have a time now. Make the old man young again. Are you hungry? Yes. All right. Well, you carry on then. Yeah, you have a spoon, you'll get along better with a spoon. You, that's right, you have a spoon, John. Do you like your spoon, John? Uh, drink? Yeah. Do you want any more gravy, Frank? Yes, I do. That's very good. That's very good, isn't it, John? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs>